Welcome back to the Lois Banks Show. I'm your host, Lois Banks. And today is my pleasure and my honor to introduce the world. Actually, the whole world actually knows Dr. Sabi, but I have the honor to introduce Dr. Sabi to the Lois Banks Show. Thank you, Dr. Sabi, for coming. Thank you for inviting me. I am so excited. Um, I actually prayed about two years ago. I asked God to allow you to be a, a guest on my show. Um, you, you don't know, but I am a licensed nurse by trade. Um, I've been wor walking and working in the healing ministry for almost 30 years. Um, I actually teach people how to eat properly. Um, I hold a Bachelor of Science degree in healthcare administration. And in April this year, I'll have a, a master's degree. But like you, I went back to the natural things that God um, instructed humankind to, to do as far as learning how to take proper care um, of the body. And when I go out across America and I'm doing health conferences, I actually do what you do. I teach people how to eat properly, how to come off the chemicals, how to drink the purified water. And I send people to your website so that they will learn how to put herbs in their body and cleanse their body. Now, there's uh, some information as far as the church is concerned has been missing. The church leaders are not incorporating herbs uh, in the nutritional program. And I've been quite irritated with that because people are actually dying uh, needlessly. But when I go out and do the health conferences and I teach people how to eat properly, then God comes in and he does the miraculous. When I'm praying for people, I see blind eyes open up. The deaf ears are hearing. And I've actually had people's legs grow out in my hands. So I've learned to take authority and speak to body parts. And when I speak to like an arm or a leg, it actually grows out. And so I've learned to combine both realms together the natural realms that God has created, and also the power of God, walking in the power of God. I would like for you to open up your heart and talk to the uh, television audience uh, and give them a little bit more insight about how God works with you, because I know he does. Do you have, how do you know which herbs to combine and put together? Is it over a period of time you've learned to create the herbs and put the herbs together or do does God give you dreams do you just have a knowing of how to how to heal humankind can you open up and talk a little bit about that thank you we're going to address the church like you mentioned yes the church is one of the valuable the most valuable institution in the society it is true that the church has not offered itself on the level of nutrition because the church is unaware. It's not fault of the preacher. Okay. The preacher intent is to do good. Okay. The preacher wants his congregation to be healthy because the society would be healthy. But the church is totally unaware as to the things that has been made over the period of 500 years. It's beginning in England with this man known as Gregor Mendel. He was a Jesuit priest. He began the process of hybridization and cross-pollination. Okay. He began to make things. The church is unaware of that. So when a brother or a sister eat hog maws, chitlins, and when the other one eat lamb and barley, one is a Muslim, one is a Christian, but they both eat food that are totally inconsistent with our cellular predisposition. Okay. So what are we saying here? That the church is wrong? No. The church needs to raise its level of understanding at this point because we are at this juncture in life. Now, about food, knowing what to eat is very extremely important. Why? Because the food that you eat would ensure that your biology would be nourished. Okay, but then we have to put so many things into consideration. One, you do not feed the gorilla the food of the polar bear. You will not feed 
the burdock, the food of the sea moss. So it goes, right? We see that plants and animals are tied to a particular expression or particular food, and they live in certain environment. You and I would agree that things function best when they are in their original form than in their natural or in their, you know, altered state. How do they function best? In their original form, not in their altered state. Well, let us see. When we talk about people today, which one of us live in the environment that was designed by creation and creator? Which one of us? I don't think that there are many people. Okay. There are very few of us, except for the Eskimo. Okay. He's the only one that I would see that live in the environment that was designed, and some black people in Africa. Okay. But when we begin to talk about originality, we have to consider Africa. But according to the history of black people, it began with slavery. Well, my, our history did not begin in slavery. It began long before slavery. And this is where Dr. Sabi himself personally draw his energy from, okay. that black woman in the jungles of Africa. And what does she have to do with anything? She has everything to do with everything. And how is that? Well, it is said that I should honor my mother and my father. Am I right? Yes, you are. Okay. Well, my mother in the jungles of Africa didn't have alcohol. She didn't have prostitution. She didn't have any drugs. My mother didn't have hospitals. My mama didn't have any drug store. Neither did she have any medicine. Neither did she eat anything that God did not make. Mama only ate that which was alkali. So my understanding of life is generated through that black woman in the jungles of Africa. And I could never lose because I am told that I should honor my mother and my father. So if you bring me something that is other than the jungle, then you are offending me and you are totally unaware of that. But when you touch me, or you link me to the jungle, then you link me to an alkali world. That is the answer to nutrition and disease, yeah. alkalinity. Well, now, mama, mama doesn't know what to select because mama talk about enzymes and protein, and these things have nothing to do with human life, nothing whatsoever. But this is mama today because mama also has been altered, like me. I'm not saying that... I have not been because I'm wearing clothes. And this is a violation. My body is not breathing. I'm breathing through my nose only, but my cells are not. So you see, I am being violated and I'm satisfied because this is the dictator of today. Yes. But about nutrition, mm -hmm. we have to consider geography and cellular predisposition, meaning that the food of the Chinese, the food of the Caucasian, the food of the black man cannot be the same because there is a difference in the genetical predisposition. Yes. That is how I arrive at where I am, wherever that place is. Wow, now I, I know, because I did a lot of research um, on you and a lot of people have been healed from so many diseases from HIV to AIDS to um, sickle cell, and the list goes on. Tell me, Dr. Sabi, how does God deal with your mind and your spirit to combine the herbs? Do you dream about how to combine the herbs? Do you just have a knowing inside your spirit of what herbs will be a blessing to humankind? Maybe the reason that I was able to combine these herbs and perform what is known as synergism is that I don't have a mind. And I don't have a soul because okay. I don't know what those things are. Okay. I live outside of that paradigm. Okay. So how did I do this? Well, again, I'm that little boy yes. that I always think of when I was 14 years of age, 
that little boy that couldn't talk about what he really see mm -hmm. because the grown-ups did not permit you to talk. And also the religious belief around you didn't permit you to express your inner desires. Okay. Now that I'm 81, I think that I should have the privilege to talk about the truth about me. I never saw things the same as my friends. I don't see things the same as my friends today. So what I did, when the doctors talk about germ, virus, bacteria, I said, no. No such thing. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean the disease is not orig originated with germ, virus, or bacteria. Disease has one origin and one alone. The body has been invaded by mucus that has been broken down. Without that breaking of the mucus membrane, there would be no disease. And the only reason why the mucus membrane may be compromised is because you're lacking of iron. So there again. So when I put it together, when you ask me the question, mm -hmm. I don't want you to believe or to think that I am such an intelligent man, a wise man. No, I'm none of that. I'm none of that. I'm just that little boy that's 14 years of age that saw things differently and then had the nerve to bring it forward. Like, you know, I've met people with PhDs that are afraid to talk. I don't have any degree. I didn't even go to school. I've never read any book but one, which was engineering. But I met people that have read tons of books and all kind of philosophy and they are afraid to talk. With me, I suppose it is because I'm not afraid. You know, I don't live in fear. I don't fear God. I don't fear the devil. I don't live in fear. I don't have to live in fear. I just live. And in that life process, I ask questions. So when I saw this thing about one disease, I wasn't afraid to bring it out. Now you ask me, how did you arrive? In, in the understanding that will show you that there's only one disease. I don't know. It, it's like asking me, how did the eagle learn to make its nest? And that nest is properly weaved. That eagle didn't go to school to learn how to do that nest. It's in the DNA. So naturally, I cannot take any credit for it. It's in the DNA. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful answer. Thank you so much for sharing um, your response with me. Now, I remember two years ago, I was introduced to a urban farmer in Atlanta, Georgia. His name was Tenenzio. His name is Tenenzio. And he introduced me to your name. Um, well, my television crew uh, completed the interview. They uploaded it on YouTube. And I went on your website and I ordered your products. I loved how my body felt after putting um, the herbs in my body. I noticed um, an increase in my energy. My skin started to brighten up. Um, when I was in school, it seems like my mind just soaked in knowledge and was able to internalize it on a whole a different level. I liked how the products worked in, in my body. My, I told my family about it. I had one family member who wore glasses when she started to take the sea moss and the bladder rack. Her, her doctor, her eye doctor, actually lowered her prescription. My mom was walking on a cane. When she started to take your sea moss and bladder rack and Lily of the Valley, she came off her cane. The, the, the combination of the herbs that are in the that are formulated together are so powerful I can't even imagine humanity not having this information it's just um, it's just a blessing I just want to thank you so much for not being afraid for uh, reaching in and helping humanity uh, the way that you have now uh, Dr. Sebi will you open up a little bit and talk about the the New York court case that you won the New York court case that was engineered by my mother <laughs> that was engineered by my mother my mama 
the one that engineered my life, the one that brought it forth in the first place, the one that I worship as my God, my mama, yeah, that woman. She called me one night. I was in Washington, and she said, you know, I've been telling people about the thing that you've been doing, but it's difficult for them to believe it. Could you do me a favor? Put the ad in the papers. Put the ad in the paper that you cure AIDS, sickle cell, lupus, herpes, cancer, and the rest. Advertise it. I said, but I'm going to go to jail. That's exactly what I want you to do, go to jail. Because that's the only way that you may gain the notoriety and the respect that you deserve. So I told Nizam Moyo in Washington, I said, could you please design this ad? AIDS has been cured by the Usher Research Institute. And we specialize in cure for sickle cell, lupus, herpes, cancer, paralysis, impotence, and others. When I put the ad in the paper, it was 1985, the month of March, in uh, New York. The ad ran from 1985 until 1987. At that point, I began to hear people calling me, why did you advertise that you cure AIDS? Well, I didn't have to give them any response. You should be ashamed of yourself advertising that you cure AIDS. And that idea and that, look, I don't want to hear it because I don't respond to things like that. The attorney general then sent his assistant, Phyllis Spey, is the assistant to the attorney general of New York, Robert Abrams. She sent me a ram that I should come to her office and bring with me any complaints that may, I have, may have received. I said, that day that you asked me to come to your office, I selected to be with my wife and my babies in Lucuyo Beach in, in Puerto Rico. And I went, when I came back, they arrested me. Practicing medicine without a license. Selling product not approved by the FDA and claiming to cure AIDS and other diseases, which is a fraudulent claim. Well, I asked the detective, how do you know it is a fraudulent claim? Has anyone investigated me? That wasn't even necessary. You're going to jail. Oh, yeah? Okay. So they had the gun drawn. I said, why do you have your gun drawn? The element of surprise. I said, my mama told me he was coming two years ago. So enough for your surprise. I went to court. The judge said, well, you're going to have to bring one of every patient that you have cured with a medical diagnostic sheet from an accredited medical school, AIDS, blindness, diabetes, sickle cell, paralysis, and others, which was nine. I took 77. Because I cure AIDS. But to many people, that is so impossible. But you know what I found? Remember what we said, that things function best in their original form than in their altered state. Well, for me to really bring out of me the greatest expression of a black man, that I have to negate all others. I am a black man. Don't expect anything German, English, Spanish from me. Expect something altogether different. And that difference is that I'm connected to the cosmic procession of life. That particular source of giving is where I draw from that avails me the privilege to do what I'm doing. Because if I am half black, or half white, I cannot function best. But if I'm all black, I could function because I am in my element. Okay. Am I right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Powerful. Powerful. <laughs> That's not powerful. That's you. Yes. Yes. That's you, the black woman. Yes. That's who I draw from. Although some of our sisters are damaged, just like I have been, but there are sisters out there that I have met in my lifetime that resonate 
on a very high plane. You guys are so powerful that you guys are confronted, you women, females, are confronted with situations that you may not have been confronted with previously, but you have the answer when you're faced with it. You always have that answer. By me not having a daddy, I never had a father. I never had a male in my proximity. I never had a male in the house that tells me do this or do that, never. I never had a stepfather, I never had a father. I only had a mother and a grandmother. So when I think of life, I see life through the eyes of these two women, and that's it, and I'm satisfied. Now, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, chemicals on the hair, color on the hair, uh, wearing your hair maybe in the most natural state. Most of the time, I'm, my hair is in an afro, either in an afro or in braids. Um, I don't put chemicals in my hair. I don't try not to press my hair. Um, can you talk a little bit about how damaging chemicals are on the brain and the pores and how damaging that can be? Hmm. You know, I shouldn't have to talk about that because we said about altered and original yeah. state. Correct. No. When you put anything on your hair, because the head is so porous, anything you put up hair go straight into the brain and it affects you adversely. So naturally, any chemical that you put on your head, on your hair, would affect your thinking. Not only your thinking, but what about the babies that you hold against your hair? Yes. And the baby face. I've had many babies brought to me that was damaged, you know, the derma was damaged because of the mother wearing chemical in her hair. So it is good that you do not wear any chemical. Okay, this question I asked today, why do we have to ask what is the damage done? You know there is damage done when any chemical is used. You know that. Yes. Why do we use them? Well, the, the reason why I wanted you to bring it out is because a lot of times people will hear it from a different vessel or they will hear it explained in a different light. And I don't hear a lot of this being talked, especially um, in the African-American community. And, and I wanted people to hear from you the damaging effect in your right. I understand. I understand. You know, the African-American community is one of the most educated community in the world. I could attest to that because I interrelate with people all over the world, from Russia to China, from China to South America. Okay. And when I... Remember, in my journey, mm -hmm. the only thing that I see with the African in America, not the African-American, because that's a hybrid. Right. Either you're African or you're American, one of the two. Right. Well, we are African people in America. Mm -hmm. So do we have any information in the schools that would help us to understand who we are? The answer is no. Because all the information in the school was written by Europeans for Europeans. And I'm not saying that was bad. I'm all, all I'm saying that we are at the juncture in life where we have to bring and put into motion those components that are going to avail us the privilege to prevent us from asking the questions, why do we use this? What are the effects of this? It's like protein. What is protein? I don't think there's a black person in the world that knows what that is. But if you talk to them, they will say, you know, I need protein. For what? What is it? They don't know. So we need to educate ourselves or re, not re-educate, but acquaint ourselves with that which is alkali, which is electrical, from that which is acid, which is non-electrical. We don't know these things. Mm -hmm. But once upon a time, our mothers did because they were in the jungle. And in the jungle, you only have that which is alkali. That's right. So now we begin to see where we need this information that Dr. Sebi has mm -hmm. and accumulated over the years to be shared on a broader spectrum.
Um, I've enjoyed this interview. Oh, yeah, I've camera. enjoyed this interview uh, with Dr. Sabi. Dr. Sabi, thank you so much for taking this time and opening up your heart and um, talking to the television uh, viewers. And can you tell them where they can order your products? Could I? Tell the viewers where they can order your products. Oh, yes. You could order a product right here in Memphis. Uh, by my sister, 38, 33 South 3rd Street. I think you will get the information, telephone number later, which is 901-237-9777. Uh, my main office is in Los Angeles, California, which is the office where, you know, we send things all over the world. And that office is uh, area code 310, 838-2490. That's Dr. Sebi cell phone. If you would like to log in to the internet, that is my information. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Sebi, for um, honoring me with your presence and, and sharing information. Um, this is actually um, a prayer that actually came to pass, and I thank you so much for everything you're doing for humanity. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for inviting me. I want to thank you so very much. And you, the listening audience, thank you very much for listening. Thank you for coming to the Lowest Space Show. I'll come back again.